You're watching Your View. Thank you for joining us. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew Tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew Show on the Mightier 1090 AM. SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Hey, great friends. What's happening on a Monday? Kaplan and Crew on the airwaves of 1090. By the way, that's another thing. I just got to make a quick mention. I'm so surprised how many people I talk to that are saying, I heard what you said on the radio. Like, because I look at radio now as another way for people to get us, but I'm so blown away by how many people still had 1090 preset on their car radio and they still are listening to 1090 on the radio. So radio listeners, um, YouTube viewers, and those of you that are watching tonight on television, Channel 4 San Diego, Santa Barbara, and 118 Orange County in Palos Verdes. Glad to have everybody along on a Monday because our top story, the Padres limp into Chavez Ravine and come out thumping their chests after taking three of four against the Dodgers. So we welcome you back inside the Seven Mile Casino Studios. Hola, hermano numero uno, grande Alejandro, como esta? Doing great. And I had something just popped in my head, and I want, can't wait to, to yell at Browner about it right now. And ask okay, to do with Fernando well, Tatis. Great. And let's say hello to this young fellow right here. Bringing the street cred from the Seven Mile Casino podcast shed. The ultimate Padre optimist. A man who called the 3-1 series win. Big Brown in the house, John Browner. That's all. I just want to be acknowledged. I want to be in three to three, <laughs> three to one. Called it. That's all. I just wanted. To, I just wanted to be said out loud. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. You got it. And now I've seen tweets going around. I lost. I said that I thought it would be a split two two, or if anything, I thought the Dodgers would win the series three one. Certainly, the way the Padres had come into this series, I think many people would have agreed. But now, because the Dodgers lost three out of four, I got a dawn the la cap t-shirt yeah. and there it is right there should get it in different colors too brown mm -mm, no 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 you got the way your dodger blue playboy ain't no ain't no switching no <laughs> colors no no don't try to switch those no colors about, and throw hey, it off I, I was thinking about the dodgers uh uniforms the white with the blue maybe i get a white one too oh i'll allow that yeah i'll allow the white i'm not finna you ain't finna come in here no orange no player no uh -uh. Uh -uh. that's gonna be a no for me that's great. <laughs> All right, listen, let me let me say this before we get into the the uh details of what happened this weekend. Listen. Game 1, the double play. Insanity, right? The way Jake Cronenworth knocks down the ball, it bounces, bounces, comes right into his hand. He's able to make a perfect throw to Tatis who slides across second and fireballs this one down towards first. Amazing, okay? That's number 1. 2. The two home runs that Tatis hits on the same night like April 23rd that his father hit two grand slams in the same inning. I don't know about you guys, but I was like, gosh, I know his dad played, but I don't really remember where. And then they show him hit this grand slam in Dodger Stadium. And there's Mark McGuire cheering. I'm like, oh, for the Cardinals, part of McGuire's Cardinals. I was like, you know, history got by me. You want to see uh, it? Oh, yeah. Put this them was side awesome. by side. This was so great the way you did this. Go ahead and play it for everybody. This is so cool. Going out in the third. How'd you do this? Fernando Tatis Jr., welcome to Dodger Stadium. Out of the yard to the pavilion to put the Padres on top two to one. Third home run of the year, second home run given up by Kershaw tonight. But it's tough to lay off. In the air to deep left like field, swing down the, same, the line huh? towards the corner, it mm. is gone! A home run! Fernando's gone deep again in L.A. This Fernando Tatis Jr. homered off Kershaw in the third. He repeats the act in the fifth. I was uh, I was watching, man, uh, to see who the pitcher was of the Dodgers, Chan Ho Park. <laughs> Do you have any idea what year that was? It's got to be 22 years probably, ago. I think it was 99. Oh, yeah, I was going to say 99. I, mm -hmm. <laughs> convenient to say that I was going to say 99 after, after I said 99. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's like a kid in class. I was going to say 99. Right here. Well, whoever whoever the Dodgers manager was in 1999, he pulled a tingler. He just sat on his ass while Chan Ho Park gave up two grand slams in one inning. He just gave up. <laughs> did nothing. <laughs> did just nothing. did nothing. Like, <laughs> come on, man. Take the guy out. Like, See, what are this, you doing? Like, the thing with Tatis on Friday night was that was two separate innings against Kershaw. Chan Ho Park gave up two grand <laughs> slams in the same inning. Right. How does how does that happen? Was that Lasorda yeah. back in 99? Oh, no, I don't think so, man. We have to look it up, okay. but I don't think so. Yeah, but but here's the thing, uh, to have a guy, Davy Johnson, there you get go. up, to bro. Have a, to have a guy 
have two home runs in the same game in the same ballpark that his dad had done it 22 years earlier and his were two grand slams in the same inning in the same ballpark. That's just, that's just the baseball universe doing some work for this guy. You know, I mean, that is to be playing in Dodger stadium 22 years later to the date. Yeah. And your dad hit two grand slams in that game and you come up and you hit two home runs. This guy this and Fernando it, it, Tatis, man. He's just, he's just on a different That's what level. I was going to yell at Browner about. Is remember when the Padre, when Tatis was out for 10 games because of his shoulder. Mm-hmm. And I said, without Tatis, this team has no chance of winning the World Series. And Scott agreed with me. Of course he did. Of course he did. Of course I, he did. Stop. I, I, Scott agreed with I, you. I genuinely, I, I think that this weekend showed exactly why I think that. This kid makes this team better than the Dodgers possibly. Like this kid is the reason why they are going to win 99 games. And he showed you, like, without Tatis this weekend, where are you? If it's Hassan Kim in there instead of Tatis, you're not winning three, three of four. Brian, so, you really think this is a crazy take that, that without Tatis, they're not winning? That, that Tatis, this past weekend, five home runs in four games and the, the spectacular defensive double play in game one, you take that off the field, you say, oh, it's okay, the Padres are still fine? It's like five home runs. I'll just put this, the graphic up because it was yeah, crazy. Yeah, let's see. Uh, five home runs, eight hits, six RBI, three stolen base. I forgot to – he scored nine times all over the week. Including weekend. the game-winning run last night. Right. I just don't think yeah. it's a hot take at all to say that without Tatis, they don't win the World Series. Like, like you know who's missing yesterday for the or this weekend for the Dodgers? Cody Bellinger. Cody Bellinger. Does he make a difference in these close, close games? I think so. I don't know if he yeah, makes the, the game winning difference, but not having him in the lineup makes a difference. Of course it does. But okay, so Browner, you think that that saying ta- without Tatis, this Padre team is not. Well, let me put it this way: make it easier for you. Without Tatis, they don't win three out of four this past weekend. Look, man, listen, Alex. I want to applaud you. I really do. I want to applaud you. That was nice. That was good. What you just tried to do to me. Hey, come on, man. I'm not gonna fall for that. That's what I do to y'all. I do this guy all the time. They're not going to put me into this trap. I'm not even going to buy into that. I'm not going to eat that. Look, man, they won because he owned the team. Win. Period. End of story. You can try to quasi mix this thing up to try to make me feel like, oh, they can do it without him. No. They don't need no, to. No, no. They don't need to do it without him. He on the roster. Okay. Right. What we were saying uh, was is that when he was hurt that we were concerned because if he doesn't come back healthy <laughs> – their chances are Zippo. I mean, this guy, you know how like at the beginning of the year before the season even started, it was like he's the face of baseball. And then he kind of really got off to a bad start. And everybody's like, oh, he's pressing. He's pushing too hard. He's got too many commercials. He's, he's, Dude, he was beyond what we thought he was this past weekend. You got like LeBron James tweeting about him. Mahomes. Um, Patrick Mahomes tweeting about him. I mean, which, this is, which leads me to my next, superstar. which leads me to my next point. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's your favorite athlete's favorite athlete. Now, when has that ever happened for the San Diego Padres? So do I believe that this team could have won three games to one without him? Yeah, because I believe in the roster and its entirety of its makeup. I believe this team can win despite him not being around because there's going to be a large patch of the season where he's not going to play because they need to take care. They need to maintenance that shoulder. So I believe that Kim's going to play a vital role going forward. Do I believe Kim is just as good? Absolutely not. Do I believe Abrams is just as good? Absolutely not. Do I think you absolutely need him to win? No, because I believe this roster is built out that they can still win if he's not going to be available. That's where we disagree at. Is he he phenomenal? 1,000% he showed that. 100% he showed he's phenomenal. With him, I have no doubt. That's the difference between the three of us. With him, I have no doubt. Dude, he is the LeBron of his team. If the Lakers the don't KD. have LeBron. He's the KD if, of if, his team. Fine. Well, put it this way. If the Lakers don't have LeBron, they got no shot. If the Nets don't have KD, they don't have no shot. And if the Padres don't have Fernando Tatis, they got no shot. You know what he's like, too? Mm. He's like Betts. Dodgers don't have a chance without Betts. It's, they proved it over the years. Getting he, he put them over the edge. That's true. Tatis is like that. They, he puts them over the edge, or he has the ability to put them over the edge. So to prove it, right? Because let me tell you this right now: the the if Machado were out, Tatis is enough. If if Betts were out, Bellinger's not enough. I don't think. But if Bellinger's out, I think Betts is enough. Uh, so 
I'm just saying, listen, let's keep going because there's a lot more to get to. The, the, to me, I think the story that comes out of the weekend is that Tatis covering his eye on Bauer will turn into a social media event. And that, to me, is what makes this even that much more fun. For those of you that are watching on YouTube or watching on TV, we're taking a look at the highlight. Tatis rounds first base, looks back at the Padres dugout, and covers his eye. The backstory, I'm sure everybody knows, is that Bauer covered his eye while pitching to the Padres in spring training. By the way, he's done it since to other teams. But the thing about Bauer is, rather than being pissed off that he's being shown up the way Kershaw was last year, Bauer's like, no, actually, I love it. I think it's great. If you hit a home run, it's hard to do in the major leagues. You should celebrate that. But what Bauer did do in his YouTube video was essentially accuse Tatis of stealing a sign. And then that just here, let's take a look at this. Alex, take us through this right here. This is Bauer's yeah, tweet. So somebody named uh, Fuzzy for whatever uh, did a 30 second video of a possible accusation of did Tatis try and steal the sign? Let me play that video real quick. Okay, let's see this. So first and foremost, I just want to say that I am one of the biggest fanboys of Fernando Tatis Jr. out there. But take a look at this clip. Right before he hits the home run, he looks at the ground kind of towards the catcher. And Will Smith notices. So he takes a glance back at Fernando, almost like, oh, my God, I think he got the sign. And Trevor Bauer throws a perfect pitch, a foot outside. And Tatis is able to pull it almost as if he knew that it was coming. I don't know. What do you guys think? Wow, that's a serious accusation because when I watch Tatis look down, um, there is no sign. You know, I don't see any sign yeah. down there that he could have stolen. You know, uh, and, 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 and it's one thing to have some like blogger guy put this out there. It's another thing when Bill Plasky of the LA Times plasters the front page of the paper. I don't know how many people are reading it, but um, and saying that the Padres cheated on this. And hey, this man. is where his scoop came from, from Fuzzy. If, if Bill. Plasky wants to take all his baseball columns now from some dude named Fuzzy on Twitter. Have at it, bro. How are the mighty have fallen? I don't care if he did steal the sign. How about that? Because you know what they've been doing in baseball? Stealing signs. Since the game began. Find a better way to, I don't know, protect the signs, yeah. catcher. At least, he, at least he looked down and he didn't have somebody clicking on a garbage can from out in the bullpen or something. Or a buzzer man. in their shirt. Yeah. Uh, so there, Now there's video as well of because, uh, of course, everything's on tape now justin turner was doing There's the same thing cody ballinger uh also looking down stealing signs like that's just if you can get away with things it's done in baseball and who are we talking about trevor bauer what happened in the first week of the season they took yeah. baseballs away from him because they thought he was doctoring the baseballs so this is if you can get away with any sort of cheating in baseball you will do it i'm not saying tatis did it because did he maybe try maybe but he didn't because there was no sign there we have Chris Rose on the show before. He works with John Boy. John Boy does these breakdowns too. You can clearly see by the time Tatis looked down, there was no hand sign there at all. None. All right. So here, but here's the thing though. This is the, the perpetuation of the story is that Bauer then sees this guy Fuzzy's tweet and, and Fuzzy makes the accusation that Tatis might have stolen a sign. So then Bauer replies to the tweet. You'll have to put it back up on the screen, Alex. Bauer replies to the screen or to the tweet. And he says, if you need to know what pitch is coming that badly, just ask daddy nicely next time, Tatis Jr. You know, I ain't scared, homie. So Bauer essentially doubles down on the accusation and says, you need to know it. Ask daddy. Well, then I don't know who did this for Tatis. I mean, unless he did this himself, this is just really good social media work right here. Tatis <laughs> responds with a picture of himself in what looks like a hotel with like a, a, a luggage cart behind him. And he's holding up a baby and it's got Bauer's face on it. And he says, Tranquilo, he, hijo. Am I getting it right now? Tranquilo, Tranquilo, hijo. Tranquilo, hijo. Relax. Which, Relax, son. Yeah. Brown, I know you didn't know that, but like me and me and Alex, we speak Espanol. Hablando like, en Espanol. No, no. Tranquilo, you, hijo. You fumbled that bag too many times. Know know. You know what's great about that, too, is the continuation of the story because Bauer was cool with the celebrations, right? But he says, you know, sign stealing is a different thing. And you know, holier than thou, Dave Roberts, friend of the show, did you hear what he said? He got, because you know, Dave Roberts is the, the sheriff of, of playing the right way. 
unless the mm-hmm. Dodgers do it, then it's okay. But if it happens to mm-hmm. the Dodgers, they oh, 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 no, you can't do that. Did you hear what he said? No. T- they got Padre fans terrible. real pissed off. You know, when you talk about peaking, um, that's – that's uh, just not the way um, you play baseball. You know, if that is the case, which I don't know, um, that'll be noted. And, and when you say noted, we have to make some kind of adjustment or have your catcher look for it? No, that's not what I'm talking about. Implying, <laughs> come on. Implying, <laughs> I'm going to out of here. Implying, I'm going to have my pitcher hit him next time. Yeah, come on, bro. Yeah, but, get out of here. Bauer, it's a, and Bauer agreed with him. Bauer kind of agreed with the same thing. No, yeah. I want to. I want to say something about that because I think it's important. Uh, that's 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 the type of stuff that would get you hit um, in other games. Now I'm mild mannered about it. Flip the bat and do all that stuff. Fine. If you're gonna look at the signs, not okay. And if you do it again, like the team that you're playing probably ain't gonna take too kindly to it, and there might have to be some on-field stuff. That is disrespecting your opponent, looking at their signs, stuff like that, whereas the bad flips and celebrating with your teammates is uh, is fine, in my opinion. What's greasing the ball then, homeboy? Huh? Mm-hmm. Get a brawn next time you do an interview, man. You're a professional athlete. Suck them things up. Squeeze your, Put your arms together. Squeeze your chest. Do some push-ups before you go back on video representing your own personal brand instead of the team brand with your hat. But I tell you this, Tommy fam, Tommy fam, if Trevor Bauer tries to hit Ben on Tatis, earn your paycheck, player. Earn your paycheck. Take a bat with you. Take a cleat with you. It don't matter. Go ahead and, and, and put work in on him. And if Dave Roberts, come on, bro. We like you here. Actually, we love you here. Don't do that to us, Dave. Hey, don't do that. All right, Dave loves you. Let me go back that. to the beginning. Let me go back to the beginning, though. Did you say that Trevor Bauer should put on a bra next time? Is that what you said? Yeah, man. Look at them things dangling. Go back to that video. He a professional athlete, bro. You need uh, to push that. That's that's Look at that's that. the type of stuff that would get you hit um, in other. Look at that top area. That's nippleage, man. That's like a that's like a that's cupping almost. No, come on, bro. Get the get the bench press out for this guy, huh? Wow, wow, wow. Tough, tough guy. This John Browner is on the Dodgers. And, and should, Dave Roberts should call uh, the UT again. Let them let them let you write another column where it says Browner. Or call him Browner. Put a bra on Trevor Bauer. Listen, yeah. People at UT, call me. Y'all know my number. I'll write a sweet column for y'all in response to Bill Plasty's trash column. Let's get a uh, let's get a still shot of Bauer, and then Browner could put it up on sided. Does does Bauer need a bra? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be a good one. Can, all right, that'll be a good one. We can all answer that question right now. Yes, one hundred percent. Hey, let me send a shout out and some love to my people. At Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. This is my guy, Gary Cooper. Listen, wherever you're listening today or watching today, YouTube, television, wherever you're catching up to us, this guy's been with us for 20 years. And if you've got any real estate needs, let's say you're trying to buy a house and, uh, well, in Alex's case, independent contractor trying to put all of his different pay stubs together and, you know, trying to make sure credit is the right score. And if maybe it's a point or two off, you got to figure out how to fix that. I mean, Gary literally will hold your hand and usher you through this process to get you the best possible deal. So if you're looking to buy, you're looking to sell, take advantage of the height of this market. Maybe you still haven't refinanced, or maybe now's a good time to refinance. Whatever your real estate questions or needs are, let our guy, Gary Cooper, earn your business. 858-376-1299. 858 376 1299. So I like this Bauer versus Tatis dust up. I like it. I think talk more stuff, tweet more stuff, put out YouTube videos, um, rock a bra or don't, you know, whatever the case. Listen, to me, this just adds fuel to the fire. I, I can't believe we got to wait. You know, there should be a super league in baseball. <laughs> Seriously, like we got to wait. Padres wouldn't be in weeks. it. True. I know, but, <laughs> but maybe this year they would be. Maybe yeah. this year they would be based on last year. Maybe they would have gotten their way in. I, I know that everybody's like, everybody was talking about, oh, the Dodgers and Padres should play every. No, man. I need a break, bro. Like, I'm freaking, I didn't even play and I'm exhausted, man. Like, I can't be doing five hour baseball games every day. That, that was, yeah. that was a for real Yankees, Red Sox five hour marathon, man. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Though. So, Bauer spoke about like taking a peek. Right. You know, that's what they called it, taking a peek. Listen. If taking a peek is cheating, hey, guys out there, hear me out. You go out with your lady, you're in a place because there's people now in these places. 
you see another attractive human being, female, and you, you're talking, but you're making eye contact. And then all of a sudden you kind of go like this, watch this, bro. You kind of go like this. You go, you just turn a little bit. You just, you just kind of take a look and then, and, but you're making eye contact with your lady, but then somebody behind you walks by and you're like, oh. if, if peeking is cheating, fellas, we're in trouble. Well, that's it. your if, example right there. If mm-hmm. your lady catches you, you're in trouble. Same hey, thing. Hey, listen, listen, listen. If peaking is cheating, I'm the Houston Astros. Okay. <laughs> hey, I don't care. I don't care. If peaking is cheating, then I'm I'm guilty. Lock me up. All right, I got to look. I don't care. Okay. And, and and fellas, if you out there, if you a peaker yourself, okay, then let your lady know who she with. Okay, ain't nothing wrong with it. she window shop all the time. She can't afford most of that stuff. Dude, peaking is not cheating. Just just to let everybody know, Bill Plaschke, peaking, not cheating. Okay. Okay. All right. Stick around more from the seven mile casino studios coming up for those of you that are with us on radio Padres Dodgers, where we're at. That's where our head's at. For those of you that are going to be with us on TV, on your view, we're going to keep things rolling as well. We want to keep going on this Padres Dodgers because there's response now, you know, there's what Bauer did. And then there's response from the Padres side. So everybody stick around. Lots more to come. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio. SoCal sports talk. Kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer serving drivers throughout San Diego and the surrounding areas. Catch Kaplan and crew Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. If you've listened to Scott Kaplan the last 20 years, you know one thing. He likes to stir up some sh- A new generation of radio. The all-new and mightier 1090. Hit it out of the park. All month long at BMW San Diego. A new 2021 BMW 430i Coupe waiting for you today. When you lease for only $479 per month plus tax. BMW San Diego. Kearney Mesa Road in the 163. And BMWSanDiego.com. I've been a part of this community for a long time. And giving back is what we do. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about the San Diego Giving Back Raffle. A benefit for Ronald McDonald House Charities of San Diego. Grand prize is this $4 million luxury home, or you could win a car, vacation, or cash. Everyone is guaranteed to win a prize. And you'll feel good knowing your raffle purchase goes to help families like the Lechugas. Get your tickets now for the San Diego Giving Back Raffle. Don't worry, Gracie. The curtain only goes up when everyone has a part to play. Okay, I gotcha. Uh oh, whoa, watch out for those audio cables. You're gonna be sick. To the left! I am not going out there without Gracie. Neither am I. Um, a little help? No pressure. Hit it out of the park. All month long at BMW San Diego. A new 2021 BMW 430i Coupe waiting for you today. When you lease for only $479 per month plus tax. BMW San Diego. Kearney Mesa Road in the 163. And BMWSanDiego.com. Time now for Kaplan and Crew tonight's Community Connect. Step up. You know, we're breaking that stereotype of what a homeless person is, this subculture society. We're just brothers, sisters, mom, dad, grandmas, and grandpas being part of the solution instead of part of the problem. So ladies and gentlemen, left hand side. We make sure that there's uh, no drug dealing, drug use, encampments around their facilities or anywhere in our neighborhood. We self-police and that's all a testament to the folks here that used to be out there. Watch out for sharp objects, ladies and gentlemen. Ed's, uh, you know, once again, he's a perfect example of the caliber of the men and women that I've been outside on the streets. Here in San Diego for over 50 years, have worked all my life since 1975. But suddenly uh, I had a stroke and I lost all muscle control. One of the things you never think will happen to you, but it can. The onus of responsibility need to go to our folks like Ed, people you've seen here that have tremendous skill and give them the opportunity to shine. It's that peer to peer support, talking to the folks out there and bringing folks in here to start the process. Let's go. We are in the hope business. What we do every day and what we've done for 40 years is to provide kids and families going through critical illnesses hope that tomorrow's gonna be a better day. 
my favorite wish is the next one because that is the power of our organization is to bring hope to kids who are going through something right now and hope can't wait so people can get involved now by donating resources they can donate in kind they can donate their time as volunteers they can donate dollars because kids are still getting diagnosed with illnesses that qualify for Make-A-Wish every day. So people can visit us online at sandiego.wish.org. They can visit us and follow us on social media. There are so many ways to get connected and people can help in many, many different ways. We need your support now more than ever because illness doesn't take a vacation and it doesn't take a break because of COVID-19. Kaplan and Crew tonight's Community Connect is fueled by the Mightier 1090. Rich Eisen here inviting you to catch my show, The Rich Eisen Show, on our flagship radio station, The Mightier 1090. We're on every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to noon Pacific time. You like what you hear? If not, that's system. I guess too bad. A new generation of radio, the all new and Mightier 1090. We have a term for a typical cheese filled, grease covered, regret inducing takeout. That's why dinner from El Pollo Loco is always fire-grilled, freshly prepared, feel-good food. The $20 Familia Dinner from El Pollo Loco. Are you living in an underserved community and facing adversity? Do you have a desire to start or grow your own business? San Diego State University's Lavin Entrepreneurship Center, the Center for Leadership and Entrepreneurial Studies, and community partners invite you to participate in our community boot camp. The boot camp provides intense, hands-on exposure to the fundamentals of launching and growing a successful venture. Register today at leadershipcentersw.org. From fitness to medical technology, explore how people are leading healthier lives on your health. Join Erica Cardenas as she introduces you to health experts and discover how our daily choices affect our well-being. Plus, learn simple tips for a healthier living. Your health, Sunday at 4.30 p.m. on Your View and yourview.com. Only at Stanton Optical can you get same-day eye exams that test your vision and eye health for under $50. Stop by or call us at 1-800-STANTON. Eye exams are provided by independent eye care doctors. Adios, love handles. Adios, couch. Adios, Quarantine 15. Say adios to the Quarantine Bod with Pollo Fit Bowls, made with fire-grilled chicken and organic super greens from El Pollo Loco. Kaplan and Crew tonight presents Sports in a Minute. The San Diego CIF Swim Championships almost didn't happen this year, but it's a good thing they did because some amazing athletes set section records over this past weekend. Classical Academy's Mateo Parker set the boys' 50-yard freestyle mark and came close to the section record for the 100 free, missing it by only 17 hundredths of a second. East Lake's Emily Lundgren broke the 100 breaststroke record that dated back to 1998, and San Marcos's Aiden Simpson beat the boys' 200 individual melody record that was previously set in 2013. Tori Pines' Mia Craw broke the girls' 50-yard freestyle record and her own 100 butterfly record that she set as a sophomore at the state meet. In addition to setting records, Craw is also part of the Tori Pines girls' team that extended their record title streak to 11 straight years. I'm Haley Stasiak. That's your Sports in a Minute. Now back to more Kathleen and Crew tonight. Great things can be achieved when a community comes together. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Watch Doing More Sunday night at 6 on Your View or stream it online at yourview.com. Doing More is brought to you in part by the San Diego Food Bank.
We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio. SoCal sports talk. You're watching Kaplan and crew tonight, powered by the mightier 1090 in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Hey, great friends, on a Monday, a Monday where Padre fans are celebrating the 3-1 win over the Dodgers. Well, by the way, yeah, it's only April still. I got it. I know. But Padre fans are celebrating while Dodger fans are just kind of saying, yeah, it's an early season series. It really doesn't matter that much. That's been our lead story. It's where we're going to keep going. Along with me, hermano numero uno grande, Alejandro Padilla en la casa. I don't think we're talking about how really ridiculous just the headline is for Bill Plaschke. Right. Like, <laughs> like Dodgers get cheated again, this time by sign-stealing Fernando Tatis Jr. I know. Wow. Let, let's get to that in one second. And then, hey, everybody, in the Seven Mile Casino podcast shed where he brings the street cred, my man John Browner, the ultimate Padre optimist. Bill Plaschke, you've joined Ting Ting on the hit list today, Joker. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Hold on. Before we talk about this really quickly, can I just say time out on the show for a second? So um, we are still all broadcasting from home. OK, we, we can't get away from that. You can see that. Right. We're all still in separate locations, even though, by the way, I'm double vaxxed as of last Friday. Oh, and by the way. No reaction, just putting that out there as a public service for those of you that are getting scared, because I know a lot of people have taken the first one and they're, they're kind of scared to take the second five one. million people across America. Five. Five billion people skip are it. Uh, skipping the second shot. Is that right? Yeah. I did not know that. For multiple reasons. Know. A lot of them claiming the side effect uh, uh -huh. issue. Yeah. Some yeah. places actually not having the proper dose. Like yeah. they ran out of Moderna, they ran out of Pfizer, but a lot yeah. of people have been not, I guess, scared of the side effects. Yeah. But yeah. Have they read well, have could... they read the side effects of uh COVID nineteen? <laughs> well, listen, I, I, yeah, I got to say, like, I really um, on Friday when I went and had it done, I was nervous. OK, because I saw what happened to you, Alex. I was I fine. Was. I mean, I, I don't know, you were not fine. <laughs> fine. Like I told you, you didn't have to record a show after like, and you know, you're fine. Right. If you didn't have to, like, work all day, yeah. you know, and be like, you know, counted on yeah. for stuff, yeah. you you'd be fine. Yes. But if you actually had to concentrate and think and do your job to the best of your ability, you know, Alex is a proven example that it was a disaster. So I was worried about my shot on Friday. I got it. And fellas, all I can tell you is I took two Tylenol before I got the shot. I took two Tylenol probably four hours after I got the shot. I drank plenty of fluids all day and um, I completely lived a normal life and never felt anything other than I would say maybe, maybe I was tired on Friday night, but so what? It was a long week last week. I don't know that I was tired for any reason other than it was a long week. And you're Pfizer up. gang, Fi Pfizer yeah. gang. My fiance yep. is Moderna and mm -hmm. she had hers on Friday, last Friday and mm -hmm. um, nothing. Just yeah. a little tiredness. That was it. Yeah. My, my girlfriend, Rachel also same thing had, she's part of the Pfizer gang. We're the same age and she had zero, z nothing. I mean, not one thing. Um, a friend of mine, though, this past weekend told me that he had gotten the Moderna and the second shot and and he got knocked down for about a day. And he said that um, a friend of his who's a doctor, blah, 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 told him that because he probably had COVID in January, even though it wasn't called COVID when he got it, that is seems to be something that if you had it knowingly or unknowingly, you might get a big old reaction in the second shot. And you remember Alex had it twice last year. Mm -hmm. That's why he was toe up during the broadcast. Listen, I, I didn't take no aspirin, no Tylenol, no nothing. I'm a beast, bro. No side effects. Really? Damn. It's just because you're it's just because you're a savage, is that's why. That's right. Boy, I mean these screets. Shout out. You know? Yeah. I, I actually said the same thing. I said the real reason that I didn't get COVID or the reason I didn't get any problems from the vaccination is because I'm indestructible, baby. That's, you know? That's right. That's the way I get down. That's right. Yeah. I know. I had the same sort of arrogance. No tone. days off. That's point. why. No days off. When you don't take no days off, yeah. you ain't got no side effects. Ain't no got no time for no side effects. Get out of here, side effects. <laughs> I take days off, but I didn't take that one off. I'm tough. <laughs> I know. I'm tough. Yeah. You know, all of this started because we're going to get back to the Padres and Dodgers. All of this started because, listen, I got to tell you guys, um, today, being that we're all broadcasting from home still, 
there are things that happen in your house that probably don't happen when you're in a radio station or a television studio. And outside my house today, and I promise you, it is pouring rain, pouring rain today. Outside my house, there are these dudes working, taking down this big, old, dangerous tree on my neighbor's property. And in the middle of the rain, these guys are out there with chainsaws, bzz, bzz, like working like beasts. You talk oh, about savage. Tough. Dude, they're they're up in a truck. Are they wearing flannel? Oh, no, they're wearing like orange oh, okay. vests so people can <laughs> see them. I'm like, bro, you're up in a tree. You know, nobody needs to see you up there but they are chainsawing and taking down big parts of this tree and then grinding it. And they're working like beasts through the middle of the rain to take down a tree. And I look at these guys sometimes and I'm like, wow, man, that's what they do. You know, I don't know how much money they make. Okay. I don't think it's a lucrative profession, you know, but I'm like, these guys are out there busting their ass. I'm in here talking crap about the Padres and the Dodgers. Oh, well, you, you can go join them if you want. I'm pretty sure they won't mind. <laughs> I'm going to go get them like, so I'm going to go ask them if they need like water or, you know, what? I got Your all rail? these beers. I got all these beers in my refrigerator from this, you know, from all the beer Fridays. I'm going to go in there and go, yo, dogs, you guys want some really good beers? You this know what? You, you know what? Yeah, I see you as part of a construction crew, Scott. You know how there's always that guy that has to hold the stop and slow sign? <laughs> Dude, you would kill Dude. it. Dude, you don't even understand. <laughs> Yesterday, I swear to God, totally true story. Rachel and I are going for our normal Sunday morning walk. We're going into the Torrey Pines Park, right? There's a guy with a stop and a slow sign. Mm -hmm. And his car is parked right here. And he's got on this orange vest. And I go, Rachel goes, oh, I wonder what he's doing. Like, why is he there? And she, then she looks down. She goes, oh, well, they're doing some construction down there. I'm like, I don't think that construction has anything to do with this guy. In fact, I don't even think this guy's really there working. I think he's like some kind of mental health guy who's got some problems. And he's got the slow stop sign. He's just messing with people. <laughs> Right on the way back six miles later, there's this giant dump truck that's trying to get out of the park and they need this people coming in to stop, you know, so he actually was working. So on the way back, we were like, oh, dude, we didn't even think you were really working. He's like, yeah, he goes, you know, just every few minutes to stop and a like slow. a cross guard for elementary yeah. schools. That's me. Yeah. That's every, every, every crew point. needs that guy, man. Every crew needs the, the, the guy that picks up the broom and picks up the debris, you know, mm -hmm. not every guy's going to get the, 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 whatever it's called chainsaws and, and stuff like that. There's yeah. levels. I know. I see myself more as the foreman of the, or, you know, maybe the owner of the company, maybe, mm. you know, less, less at the slow stop. But it, anyway, no, no, I like that no? idea. <laughs> <laughs> you are really good at telling people what to do though. That's for sure. <laughs> stop <and> slow down. <laughs> hey, I said, stop. Damn it. All right. Um, listen, let's get back to it. We were talking about the Padres and the Dodgers. And again, one more time for those of you that are just getting with us headlines, right? Game one of this series is in insane double play. Game two is the two home runs on the anniversary of dad's two grand slams on Saturday, Tatis two more. Um, then the peaking controversy starts and um, the Dodgers actually win this game five, four and Sunday, the Padres are down huge seven, one. Tatis hits another home run. Padres wind up winning in extra innings, 8-7. Padres win the series 3-1. to one. I do think that Padre fans are taking this series win and now the score 4-3 to three through the first seven of 19 games that these two teams will play. I do think Padre fans are celebrating it a little too much. And I do think that Dodger fans are downplaying it a little too much. If you're the Dodgers, you got to take the Padres real seriously. I mean, the, the, the Padres are being taken so seriously in L.A. that their lead columnist in the L.A. Times is accusing the Padres now of cheating. As if Fernando Tatis Jr. hitting solo home runs, five of them, is the absolute reason why the Padres won this series three games to one. There are so many other things that Dodger analysts could point to could be starting pitching. It could be relief pitching. It could be management. It could be defense. It could be lack of, of key hitting at times when you've got so many men left on base, uh, bases loaded four times in the game yesterday. Let's put that back up on the screen, Alex. We'll, we'll take a peek at this yeah. since that's what Bill Plasky likes to talk about taking this peeks. This is his tweet because I, un mm -hmm. I unsubscribe to the LA times after this. So I, when I click on it, it tells me to subscribe <laughs> and I'm like, no, thank you. So uh, Bill Plashby, call him. Dodgers get cheated again, this time by sign stealing for now Tetsis Jr. Yet don't do anything about it. So is he insinuating they should have hit him? 
is he insinuating they should have like they should have won the game? Yes, you know. Yes, no, yeah. I read the column oh, early this morning. There you go. And he, the insinuation is, how is it you allow this guy to hit a bunch of home runs, then, a, according to Plaschke, who I think saw Fuzzy's tweets, whoever Fuzzy is, Plaschke then blatantly accuses the Padres of cheating. By the way. If this is kind of sports radio, loudmouth, gas bag stuff, it's it's kind of not that big a deal. But when you're a credentialized L.A. Times columnist and you're putting out there that Tatis is a cheater, comparable to the Astros, uh, a pretty serious accusation. And yes, so his insinuation was, how do you let this guy come back up to bat and not buzz him, move him off the plate, make him feel threatened? How is it you just let this guy dominate you like this? That's what Plasky's yeah. saying. Yeah. Bust him inside. Check like out, a, hit check him. got Bellinger doing it too. Oh. You think oh. he wrote about this one? Oh. 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 Bellinger. Oh. Bellinger. Oh. Bellinger looking down at science, perhaps. Right, he did it three times. Did. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Oh, wow. Damn. Wow. Wow. Well, I guess has he been hit since he did this? How are they throwing at him? Oh, is he on the level of the Astros? Listen, man, this is hilarious to me. The second these guys get a whiff of resistance to the greatest team in baseball history on paper, now now you got to cheat to beat them? Come on, Bill Plasky. You're supposed to be better than this, bro. Are you really out here doing this? This is what your career come to? You clickbaiting on Twitter now? You that lost in the wilderness? Of, it of, worked. Of, I mean, it, it, it did, but at the it same totally time, worked. <laughs> he looks like a clown. He looks. He, Scott's correct. He's a respected journalist across the country. This is what you're doing now. You ain't got you out of that unbelievable series. You can't talk about maybe Dave Roberts choked it away. You can't talk about them blowing a seven to one lead. You can't talk about any of that. You want to talk about something that you consider cheating as bad as the Astros when it's prevalent through baseball? Your own guy does it. Guess who told us that? Twitter did. So since you're on Twitter, Bill, how about you write about that? I got to tell you something. I don't know that Bellinger was trying to steal signs. And I don't know that Tatis was trying to steal signs. I don't know that looking at Bellinger's eyes as he's at bat necessarily means he's looking at the catcher. I mean, I don't know it. And I don't know that Tatis was trying to do it either. Maybe they all are, and I'm just being naive. Maybe they're not, and we're just trying to be too presumptuous. Nonetheless, listen, the Padres didn't go beat the Dodgers three games to one in L.A. because they were cheating. They went there and they beat them. Because for some reason, the Padres only seem to be getting up for the Dodgers. It's kind of like if you were in high school and your high school football team was terrible and you were 0-9, but you're going into your last football game of the year and you beat the rival. And even though you're 1-9 to end the season, you're satisfied as can be because you beat your rival. Mm. You know, the Padres got to take what they've done here against their rival and they've got to continue it. You can't be giving up three straight games at home to Milwaukee and then go out and play your best ball against the Dodgers and then come back down to earth. You got to keep it going because I don't know about you guys, but um, like I'm not all that into the next series here. You know, like I, it, the Dodgers have gotten me so excited and the, the, the energy of this series got me that I'm not, like I, I'm going to come down a little bit. I can tell you that right now. Well, it's kind of what my dog, like you asked my, in the first segment of the show today, how did my Dodger fan or my Dodger friends react? And the way they reacted is, well, you're still in third place. And that's really is the reality. If you want to, if you go out and you beat the Dodgers 19 times, but you're still in third place, what good does that do you? Nothing. So they do have to go out and beat the Diamondbacks. And then they do have to go out and beat the Brewers and whoever else is coming up on the schedule. So, and the Diamondbacks, by the way, I don't know if you guys paid attention to baseball yesterday. Uh, they played a doubleheader and gave up one hit in <laughs> both games combined. So they got some pitching. Obviously, those two guys are going to pitch tomorrow. But yeah. you have to win those games because at the moment, it is fantastic. You, I think they turned a corner, like we said last week. Mm -hmm. uh, they were 11-11. and 11, They went to Texas. Slam Diego was born, and they went on a roll. This is a, obviously could easily be a propellant for you to go and start winning games. But you do have to go out and win games that are not against the Dodgers. That's just a fact. And that's baseball, and I'm expecting them to do that. I just think that after the first series, they won that last game. They came out. They were a little distracted because they knew what was next. Now that this, now they're over the hump and they're past this, I think every game will be taken the same way. Yeah, they're still not in first place, but if you look at the records, 
they're four. They got the fourth best record in the National League. So yeah, thirteen and eleven may not look great, but you're still in a great position in the division. You're you're not like a bunch of games back. The Dodgers aren't having to run away with anything. Now, if this had happened and the Dodgers were basically ten games or twelve games ahead in division, yeah, it would just be another division game. But you single handedly held them close. You kept them within gravity, and that's what you wanted to do going in the series, and you accomplished that. So. The Dodger fans can say what well, Cap and his guys can say whatever they want to say. We know what the situation is. Last night I went to go in the middle of the game when it was seven to one. I was like, I'm gonna order some dinner and go pick it up. What'd you and get? I, I got sushi last night. And mm-hmm. I've turned on the radio and what I What kind of roll? What kind of roll? Yesterday was a crunchy roll, hmm. a caterpillar roll. Okay. It's for me, and my fiance, a rainbow roll and a I'm about Philly roll. You on you yeah. in three roll territory. I don't know, ooh, big no, oh, no, 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 no. This you got a, you, you got into four roll territory. Though. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He, he threw fiance in there after the third roll yeah. because when he was just mm-hmm. going out rallying off these rolls, I'm like, ooh, slow down, that big fella. Let Top me, of eight. Let me think. Of, let me think about that though for a second because I had my two daughters with me last night and they were pushing me to go get sushi. So like you, mm-hmm. I had to listen to the game in their car. Yeah. And then when we got into the restaurant, I actually was able to turn it on my phone. Mm-hmm. The restaurant um, had it on the TVs while I waited. Yeah, I was like, what the hell's going on in this place? They don't, nobody got a TV in yeah. here? Um, but let me just think about the rolls here. Protein roll. I think they each got a caterpillar. Some sort of, there was a California. Then there was like a Hawaiian of some oh kind. Oh, my God. I know. There were like at least six rolls yeah. on the table. And, and I didn't do any. You were 100 bucks deep in sushi, man. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. It's my, dude it's kids. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. What? You, you go to sushi with kids. It's a big loss. I went during, so a, just I went during a happy hour and it was still $55. I was like, oh, oh yeah. man. Sushi Anyways, is hitting the expensive. Uh, yeah. Jesse, the radio guy, made a, uh, a point about the Tease that I think is, is what we're talking about. He's performing against Kershaw, against Bauer, against Dustin May against their aces right so go face regular teams and regular pitchers that have a like the the guy they're playing tomorrow i think has like a seven five era it's like yeah like go get your batting average to 350 you know like that's the games that you must capitalize on if you can do it against kershaw and bauer and bueller you should be able to do it against merrill kelly tomorrow mm-hmm. merrill street it's interesting merrill street pitching tomorrow merrill kelly oh Interesting, you were listening to the Padres broadcast. I actually was listening to the Dodger broadcast. I listened to the Dodger radio broadcast. Like yeah. Why are we shocked yeah. by that? I'm not shocked by that. That's yeah. what I expected. Yeah. Uh, I, I got to say, do you guys have any idea who the play by play voice is of the Dodgers on radio? Vince Scully. Not Vince Scully. Good. Though. He used to be on ESPN. I think he's really good. I, for, I yeah. think it's, that's why I listen to him. Is it Charlie Duke Stein? Zombie. Charlie Steiner. Yeah. No, it's Charlie Steiner. And the reason it's it's funny, I, I got in my car and I had on both the the Padres station and then I turned over to the Dodgers station. I just thought I'd listen to it from each perspective. And um, I got to say, like, there's there's a sound that the Dodger. You know what it is? It's it's that I know Charlie Steiner's been with the Dodgers for a long time. And I know that Jesse's been there for a little bit. And I know that Gwyn Jr. has been there for a time and he's been around the franchise. But there was something about Ted Leitner and the older guy on AM radio weaving the story of the game. And I guess maybe I've gotten so um, accustomed to Ted and I'm so Jesse and, and Tony are new. So I decided I would turn over to the Dodgers and hear what they had, what they sounded like. And it does. It sounds like the Dodgers, like they try and make it sound cool and hip with their like imaging in between commercials and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's then it's Charlie Steiner who sounds kind of classic. Yeah, you know, a baseball traditionalist. You know, I, I do yeah. like that old timey feel um, of things. But it is I also love He's like not, Mud and Don he, on TV, and they're not traditionalists oh at all. They, they have done Don and Mud. Listen, I've always said this: Mud is the glue because it didn't matter who ever was the play-by-play guy from a legend like Dick Emberg or somebody who was very new like Matt Vasgersian at the time or anybody that's filled in since. Mud has been great with all of them. Yep. You know, so anyway, where were Better we? Uh, let me have a second here. Well, leave a rod alone, man. He's no, going I will some not. Tough times right now. He's going through some tough times. Well, he cheated on Halo. It's not the... my fault. It's not my fault. He Did he cheat? cheat? Oh, so he's no, according, no, according no, to ho- no, according don't do to, that. <laughs> according to Jose Canseco, he is a lifelong cheater. Because that's a in, great source uh, in career mm-hmm. 
and personal. Okay. <laughs> well, I think I think Jose Canseco would be the kind of guy like you're like, yeah, I don't want to believe him, but I know he's telling me the truth. Right. You know, you know, he's because he he'll air at anybody. At this point, out. what incentive does he have to not tell the truth? But how would he yeah. know what A Rod's doing in his personal? He's obsessed life? with A Rod. Like you ever whole... see his, tweet, his Twitter account? He's, uh, dude, he was A Rod from Miami uh, twenty years earlier than A Rod. I from can't Miami. remember believe what he me, tweeted. This all goes back the other day. So like, it was some holiday. And he's like, happy this holiday to everybody but A-Rod. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me have two seconds to just say thank you to one of our great sponsors, Corky's Pest Control, 1-800-901-1102. Listen, if you're in San Diego, if you're in L.A., if you're in Riverside, Cork can come to you. He can get to you. Listen, if you've got rats, spiders, uh, if you've got any other kind of animal that is living at your house that is not supposed to be there, like gophers, Corky can take care of things. And if you uh, have just regular stuff, like, you know, people got termites, unfortunately, that's part of home ownership in Southern California. Uh, it could be ants or spiders or nuisance pests. You got pest control needs. Corky got pest control solutions and great prices. And that four-year guarantee for termites, amazing. So listen, call them. Everybody knows that phone number. Corky's Pest Control. Call 1-800-901-1102. Corky's. All right. Listen, for those of you that are with us on radio, stay with us. For those of you who are with us on TV, you're going to have to come to YouTube to see what happens after this. Uh, stick around. As much as we're talking Padres Dodgers today, I got to turn my attentions a little UFC. bit. UFC. Ju- to Masvidal. Ju- yeah. I, no, not soccer. Oh. I got to turn my attentions to UFC 261 and the big, gigantic knockout. I got to talk about that coming up. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio. SoCal sports talk. Kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. Hey, Dave Smith here. Make sure you listen to my show on the Mightier 1090, 6 to 10 p.m. Saturday and Sunday night. The only local sports talk in all of Southern California on the weekends right here on the Mightier 1090. The all-new and Mightier 1090. Hit it out of the park. All month long at BMW San Diego. A new 2021 BMW 430i Coupe waiting for you today. When you lease for only $479 per month plus tax. BMW San Diego. Kearney Mesa Road in the 163. And BMWSanDiego.com. The Olympic Games, where the eyes of the world will turn to Tokyo for the greatest show on earth. Catch all the action leading up to the Olympic Games on Countdown to Tokyo. Every Tuesday on Your View. You'll get the latest news on preparations for the games, details about the sports involved, and in-depth insights into teams, athletes, and the host city. Don't miss Countdown to Tokyo, Tuesdays on Your View. From fitness to medical technology, explore how people are leading healthier lives on Your Health. Join Erica Cardenas as she introduces you to health experts and discover how our daily choices affect our well-being. Plus, learn simple tips for a healthier living. Your Health, Sunday at 4.30 p.m. on Your View and YourView.com. Only at Stanton Optical can you get same-day eye exams that test your vision and eye health for under $50. Stop by or call us at 1-800-STANTON. Eye exams are provided by independent eye care doctors. Hit it out of the park all month long at BMW San Diego. A new 2021 BMW 430i Coupe waiting for you today. When you lease for only $479 per month plus tax. BMW San Diego, Kearney Mesa Road in the 163 and BMWSanDiego.com. Here's Kaplan Accrued tonight's 60-second timeout with Haley Stasiak. It was quite a weekend in the Big West for a couple area schools. UC Santa Barbara men's volleyball won their first Big West championship against UC San Diego on Saturday night and earned an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. It will be the first time in 10 years that the Gauchos have made an NCAA tournament appearance. UC Irvine baseball made a statement this weekend with a series win against previously ranked Oregon State. The Anteaters had a tight series against the Beavers with all three games being decided in the ninth inning or in extras. D1 Baseball has UC Irvine ranked at number 24 in this week's college baseball rankings, while Baseball America has them ranked at number 20. It's the first time since 2018 
that the ears have been nationally ranked. That's your 60 second timeout. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight. Kaplan and Crew tonight's 60 second timeout is presented by Your View. It's Pharrell here inviting you to catch my shows on the Mightier 1090. We're on twice every Monday through Friday, 1 to 3 p.m. and 7 to 9 p.m. Pacific. Trust me, all the other sports stations are sleeping with your wife. The all-new and Mightier 1090. The Olympic Games, where the world's best athletes will compete on the most prestigious stage. Catch all the action leading up to the Olympic Games on Guide to the Games every Tuesday on Your View. The series examines the qualification process, the history of the games, and the teams and athletes that are expected to shine, plus information about the rules, events, and competitors. Don't miss Guide to the Games, Tuesdays on Your View. Are you living in an underserved community and facing adversity? Do you have a desire to start or grow your own business? San Diego State University's Lavin Entrepreneurship Center the Center for Leadership and Entrepreneurial Studies and community partners invite you to participate in our community bootcamp. The bootcamp provides intense, hands-on exposure to the fundamentals of launching and growing a successful venture. Register today at leadershipcentersw.org. Great things can be achieved when a community comes together. Join Erica Cardenas on Doing More as she introduces you to ordinary people working side by side to confront tremendous challenges and make a positive impact in their community. Watch Doing More Sunday night at 6 on Your View or stream it online at yourview.com. Sponsored by The Barnes Firm, partnering with Shelter to Soldier and saving lives two at a time. Visit thebarnesfirm.com slash shelter to soldier and help save more lives. Time now for Kaplan Accrued tonight's Community Connect. Shelter to Soldier selects dogs from shelters and rescue groups all throughout California. Our ideal candidate at Shelter to Soldier is eight months to a year and a half old. They're confident in different environments. They have strong social drive. Another motivator like food or toy drive. And ultimately, these are dogs that want to have a job uh, and that have a greater purpose to become a service dog. Currently about 85% of our dogs pass their service dog training. But if they don't pass, they become a career change. Uh, we don't like to use the word failure around here. Um, so career change to an emotional support animal, or if that doesn't work out, then they career change to a pet dog still finding a loving placement and purpose in life. Casa de Amparo has been around since 1978, and now we're in the Twin Oaks Valley in San Marcos with a beautiful campus. We work with children and families who've experienced chronic trauma over their lifetime, and we're here to help heal that. I always told myself, you know, seeing that my mother passed away through domestic violence, that I would never put myself in that position. And if it ever happened, like, I would leave. But it's easier said than done. These are foster youth who are not able to manage in a foster home environment. My husband and I have been a part of the San Marcos community and our businesses since 1993. One of the beautiful things about Kayleen, she started here at Casa de Empire years ago when we were at the shelter with a church group. How can we best give back is to volunteer our time. Because without donors like Bassett, we would not be able to provide the services we provide. Kaplan and Crude tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer, serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. I've been a part of this community for a long time, and giving back is what we do. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about the San Diego Giving Back Raffle, a benefit for Ronald McDonald House Charities of San Diego. Grand prize is this $4 million luxury home, or you could win a car, vacation, or cash. Everyone is guaranteed to win a prize. And you'll feel good knowing your raffle purchase goes to help families like the Lechugas. Get your tickets now for the San Diego Giving Back Raffle. 
Don't worry, Gracie. The curtain only goes up when everyone has a part to play. Whoa, okay, I gotcha. Uh-oh, whoa, watch out for those audio cables. I'm gonna be sick. To the left! I am not going out there without Gracie. Neither am I. Um, a little help? No pressure. for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM. A new generation of radio. SoCal Sports Talk.